All right, uh, JF Bibo here. Uh, let's start to talk about uh, this Loki costume of mine. I will be showing, uh, I will be explaining how I built every single little piece of the costume. Uh, obviously, I'm not wearing the costume right now. I can't exactly show you every little detail if it's, if it's actually on me. So if you actually want to see it on me, go back to my first video. Go back to the introduction video where I'm talking about the costume in general and I'm actually wearing it. Um, let's see now, uh, yes, my plan was to split the description into four major parts. Uh, that is still my plan, however, looking at this now and uh, recollecting uh, everything that I went through to build the thing, I think that uh, these four parts will probably be further split into uh, sub parts, little little partlets, to keep things somewhat manageable. I don't want to end up uh, uploading 40-minute videos or whatnot. So uh, yes, yeah, so you you will uh, find these four major sections uh, split into smaller ones. Uh, and the first one is uh, the uh, everything below the waist, uh, the pants, the footwear, and uh, there we go. Let's start uh, talking about that right now. Picture is that I had the uh, the uh, foresight of actually taking while I was making uh, all these uh, all these uh, costume pieces, uh, which will be very useful. I'm sure you'll find. Uh, well, now the pants. Now, of course, the basic structure of a pair of pants, um, if you've made any or if you've <laughs> worn <laughs> any pants, you might have noticed that it's very straightforward uh, at its at its core. You've got four major panels, let's call them that, which are really that shape here, across the waist here, a quarter of the waist, down the leg and across the foot, and up here, and then here it curves ever so slightly outward, and here you've got the crotch, you've got this little pointy bit here, and then it goes back here, curves back inward, towards the uh, the waist. Now, these panels, there are four of them, obviously, one for the left, one for the right, and then same for the back. So for a grand total of four, you just sew them on together like so, and there you go, pair of pants. Of course, you are going to need another four panels if you intend to line your, uh, your pants, uh, which in my case, they are indeed lined. Uh, now, of course, you might be wondering, well, you are already wearing so many pieces of, uh, so many layers of leather and vinyl. Uh, yes, uh, vinyl is going to be, you'll find, Loki's um, uh, friend uh, uh, for an Asgardian who has very few friends, let's face it. Uh, vinyl is going to be Loki's um, go-to material. And why on earth would you want to add even more layers? Uh, well, of course, the, uh, the discomfort of having an extra layer is greatly offset by the, uh, by the fact that you no longer have vinyl brushing against your, uh, your skin. So yes, you do not want vinyl uh, directly. So anyone who's worn vinyl pants uh, will understand exactly uh, what I'm talking about here. So yes, you really might want to line your uh, vinyl pants with actual cloth fabric as I did. And why green? Well, why the heck not? Obviously, you know, I'm, I repeat, I'm nothing if not a perfectionist. Uh, green lines a, a great many other pieces of uh, Loki's outfit, so why not line the pants with green as well, even though no one will ever see that. So there you go, so your four panels on the outside, four panels on the inside, and, uh, and here, and let's take a look at a picture of the pants um, while they were uh, still fully, well, they were in, in the process of being put together, but they, they're all fully uh, splayed out like that. They remained uh, in that state for quite a while. I needed them to be like that uh, bef uh, so that um, I had full freedom of movement. I could, I could access freely the front or the, uh, or the back of every, um, of, of every piece. So the very, very last thing I did was to 
to um, sew that uh, that very last seam and make them fully completely wearable uh, so yes so there, there they are fully opened and uh, let's talk about well let's talk about uh, here the um, the inner thigh here that is the only place on the on the entire costume that you will find that particular vinyl with this this, this maroon uh, color um, so obviously I did not have to buy a whole lot and uh, why is it there I don't know search me but you, you can clearly see that Loki has this uh, this lighter um, inner thigh, the, the inseam, I suppose you would call it, um, uh, color there. Uh, the rest, well, the rest is this very dark brown. It's, it's very supple uh, vinyl that I, that I found, so uh, very nice, very easy to work with. Uh, yes, and you will find that all over the pants here, even the, these little knee parts there that we'll, we'll be talking about soon. Uh, so yes, dark brown, dark brown, dark brown everywhere. And let's talk about the uh, the belt. Uh, this was uh, completely optional. Once again, there are uh, pieces that that fall on top of this, uh, and no one ever sees the uh, the belt of the costume. So I didn't have to make it this pretty with nice little belt loops. And I use, as you can tell, a different kind of fabric. You will see this fabric elsewhere on on the costume. Uh, but uh, there, there was no need for me to use it here at all. Uh, there was no need for me to put even a, uh, a belt uh, whatsoever. Um, but uh, I needed something to keep the pants on, ideally. And uh, yeah, you know, once again, why not? You know, if you're gonna make something, even if it's not gonna be seen, why not make it uh, pretty? The belt itself is the only part of the entire costume that I did not craft myself. I just happen to have it. It's nice. It's one of those. Uh, oh gee, I don't know what you call those. Those those buckles that uh, don't actually have a little pin. You know, well, you know that. It had that, which I wish I quite like. It just, it just, it has a little stud which goes, which works itself into these little holes. So uh, yeah, so there, yeah, there you go. You can uh, keep your pants up with suspenders for all I care, anything, uh, an elastic uh, waistband. I don't know, but uh, I quite like that. It's very nifty. Uh, let's talk about the uh, the knee parts. Uh, you can once again see the knee parts on my progress pictures here you've got uh, straps now I made these strap <clears throat> these uh, straps myself uh, they didn't they didn't uh, come like that uh, pre-cut so I cut them they are actually double layered they are double thickness so uh, first of all I cut them sewed uh, the uh, the two pieces together and then finally I started interweaving them uh, into one another so one piece here another piece that goes underneath sew them together here at the bottom another piece here sew them together here another piece that goes behind it so where oh, so oh, here so here and this yeah I suppose in the bottom or maybe not um, and finally, the last two. Now, as you can tell, in in uh, in certain key areas, I left certain parts completely unsewn, like this here, this here, this on top here, and then all the way around the leg. This this is completely unsewn, and this was made on purpose. As I walk, this shifts. This it shifts. You can see occasionally little gaps, little holes. It adds an extra dimension which I absolutely love um, so yes you could like peer down some cracks here which yes it really gives it that uh, that depth that I quite like uh, I suppose you don't have to do that I'm not sure that there's any evidence that it's supposed to be like that but I quite like it and it is not the only place in the costume that I did that there are other crisscrossing uh, the, the themes elsewhere in the costume. First of all, there's another piece right here. <laughs> Duh. Anyway, uh, th that's not what I mean. There are other areas, entire, uh, entirely different areas where you will find this uh, crisscrossing uh, pattern here. And uh, yes, in these other areas as well, I used this uh, whole depth, uh, see-through, uh, unsewn gaps there. Now, uh, the knee parts, they are attached to the leg right here and they wrap all the way around 
and uh, you, you can tell that they, that they climb, they climb up and you see now you see more of these intentional gaps here, which I, which I quite like. They keep wrapping up, upward, and they end up back here. They end up right, right up the crotch right here, so, and, they, and they reattach themselves to the other part of the maroon little, uh, uh, little strip here. So there you go, all the way around the knee. And that's for the knee part. And now, uh, the uh, most fun aspect... Oh, well, let's briefly go back to the belt, the belt area. Little button, quite nice, quite cute. Round, uh, it fits the rest of the outfit. No one will ever see it, but there you go. Uh, now, the four panels. Yes, this is how the whole thing started. Start talking about the four parts of the, 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 the four panels of regular pant making. Usually, a panel will start down the middle and go all the way to the edge. And here you'll have a seam. You'll notice here that on my pants, the seam is here. It's not directly on the edge. It's here, on, uh, on the front, running down the front of my thigh. Same thing here on the other side. Um, why is that? Well, there are two, uh, two major reasons. First of all, I wanted the, um, the little rectangular pieces of armor to start on the front of my legs, not on the sides. And I did not want to have to negotiate my way around or through a seam in the middle of these rectangular parts. Um, and um, yes, and that's why I didn't want to have a, a seam right here. Uh, it might have ended up like in between two columns of, of rectangles. It might have ended up like right in, uh, in the middle of a, of a column. Didn't want to have to bother with that. So there you go. There's the seam and the rectangular armor begins at the seam and runs all the way behind it, all the way down the back. Uh, so there you go. I, my, my seam is in front so that it wouldn't uh, interfere with the armor. And so, so, you, so you can guess, therefore, that the front panels are much narrower than your normal uh, pant panels usually are. And the back panels, well, they are much wider because they begin down the middle. They go all the way to the edge and then they keep going so that they can wrap around and end up here. So much narrower parts for the front and much wider parts for the back. And yes, that has brought us to one of the uh, two biggest headaches hassles of the entire Loki costume. One of them is this uh, armor area here, these darn little rectangular pieces of armor. Uh, of course, there are many, many uh, problem-inducing, time-consuming parts to this whole costume, uh, but yes, there are two that stand out from the rest, and one of them is these. The other, uh, we'll get to that soon enough. Um, but uh, yeah, so the armor, I suppose I will, uh, I will wrap up this video um, uh, talking about uh, the rectangular armor, even though there's quite a lot uh, to, to say about it. Uh, gee. Oh yeah, well, I've got some more progress pictures uh, on that, first of all. So yeah, th there you go. Uh, what is it? What is it made of? I used Wonderflex. It is my understanding that Wonderflex is essentially the same thing as Warbler. It is functionally the same thing as Warbler. I have not used Warbler yet. I've used Wonderflex many times in the past. At one point I bought a huge, a huge pile of it and it has sustained me um, all these years and now I'm pretty much down to my last uh, few bits so my next project uh, I suppose I will either get some more or I will check out this warbler thing and I'll be able to compare if, if they are really if they really are that similar anyway um, so yes Wonderflex uh, you heat it up it's it's a plastic sheet you you you, you cut it you heat it up uh, you can shape it uh, stick it to itself, things like that. Uh, from what I've heard, it is indeed what Warbler can do as well. Um, 
Uh, but of course, in, in, in my case here, in the case of these little rectangulars, I didn't have to shape it. No, just cut it, paint it. This is uh, gold, just your regular gold shiny uh, paint. And that was it. It was ready to install, so no need uh, to uh, to shape it, to give it a, a particular little shape, which is usually the point of Wonderflex and Warbler. But no, I just needed some hard little pieces. And now, um, installing a single one of these little panel uh, required me to um, to uh, to use a little uh, hole punching tool. Well, that's an inconvenient. Should have turned off my phone. Hold on a minute. Oh, sorry about that. I had to take that call. Uh, who who calls people anymore? I mean, we're all about texting nowadays. Uh, anyway, uh, well, that little pause enabled me to go get, fetch a few tools that I wanted to show you. So, uh, the process of installing a single one of these little armor panels uh, meant that I had to, first of all, punch four holes in um, my pants four holes uh, through the vinyl and the lining of the pants with this nice little uh, leather working tool uh, work uh, the... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, n not yet I had to also drill, drill four holes in the panel the panel that I was about to install apply the panel to the, uh, to the pants work in the, uh, the, uh, the front and the back part of the rivets so four rivets, four parts in the front, the four um, corresponding parts in the back, and uh, then uh, the, just just snap them together. So that's a single uh, piece. So repeat that. Uh, let me see. I've got uh, one, two, three, four. I've got five columns, and I believe I've got ten rows. So that's fifty here. 50 uh, on the other side yeah so if that's that's the kind of job that you have to uh, look forward to now if you look at the um, at the original uh, costume design uh, Loki's little rectangles uh, are perhaps a little smaller than mine therefore he can fit more down his uh, legs than I have he might have instead of um, 10 rows, he might have 12, I think. He might have a sixth uh, column. I believe that might be the case. But this is really as small as I was able to make them. Any smaller than that, and uh, the holes might have been too close to each other, and I might have become uh, just a little too much insane. Uh, this was a crazy enough job as it was. So I'm quite happy with it, even though, yes, the purists might say that oh, you don't have exactly the same amount of rectangles. Well, fine. You will be low-key next time. And uh, now let's see what... Oh, yeah, well, I left out one part intentionally. Because originally, this, uh, that's all I did. No, that's all I did. <laughs> as if that wasn't enough. Um, so, yes, punch through the uh, the pants drill through the rectangles and then the rivets and then just just snap them with your fingers they just they just clip on that's all i did and then when it was all done and everything else then i sewed the pants shut everywhere and there we go i had my pants then i realized that just snapping them with your fingers is not enough they are prone to just coming loose if you just drag your thighs against the edge of chairs and things like that uh, they will come loose and they just don't look right they uh, they just they 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 jut out they poke out uh, doesn't look right you need to hammer them of of course i mean some people are, are viewing this as well duh jf that's quite quite obvious well you know as i said before i was rusty when i made this costume i hadn't made one in years so there you go that's uh, that's what comes from uh being a little out of practice i forgot to uh, hammer them so you uh, you either hammer directly on them or with a little uh, tool you know the kind of tool that you used to uh, install to install uh, pressure snaps um, uh, but either way you want to use a, a wooden mallet of course I say of course but I don't quite know the reason but either way I do know that you're supposed to use a wooden mallet and uh, there you go so don't forget to hammer them in so that well, that part was not too time consuming but the problem is is that I did it 
while my pants were done when they were you know all the seams were shut they were in this finished state what what happened because of that is I worked like this and I hammered 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 and unbeknownst to me the inside the inner part of each and every single rivet drove into the other parts of the pants so I work like this which is the back of the leg and then when I flip back around the front of the thigh here had all these nasty little round you can see the quite well here these l l l welts and indentation which which is a uh, which will remain there forever which is a a testament to, to my um, to the fact that I was out of practice out of shape in uh, cosplay making that was a mistake so uh, he, of course he, nobody nobody but me knows they're there well except all you guys now but uh, yes yeah, so I'm the only one that this really bothers but it does it really does bother me and I just have to work with that um, live and learn or live and relearn as they were so yes yeah, so don't forget to hammer your little things um your little rivets uh, while your pants are still uh, completely splayed out or if if you if you must do what i did then for god's sake just put a piece of wood down down the length of your leg just protect the other side that's all i had to do that's all i had to do just put something to uh, to to absorb all the hammering so yeah, there you go. Um, and of course, I, I did I did what I could to try to reduce the. Uh, I, I I looked up, you know, how how to fix um, uh, creases or things like how to fix vinyl. I googled that. I found some tricks. So this is already actually not quite as bad as it was initially. I ironed. I ironed uh, the the uh, this section. Of course, you got to be very careful uh, with the uh, temperature that you're using when you're ironing uh, a a material that is essentially plastic, which uh, is just begging for you know the right temperature to start melting all over you. So yes, I had to be very careful and uh, try to make it so that uh, it wasn't quite as bad. Um, and well there you go that's the pants now you might be asking these uh is this uncomfortable you are quite literally sitting on some of them while you're you know while you're sitting uh no it's it's really not that bad in fact uh, the little bits of metal they actually help to to uh, to cool you down so it's, uh, it's quite nice um and and yes, uh, because they are hammered now, all the rivets are hammered. They rarely, if uh, if ever, snap off. I rarely uh, ever have to replace uh, to, to replace them. And if I do, well, there you go. I ordered enough so that I've got some spares. You might be you might be asking uh, how uh, how fragile is it? Do any of them break? You can tell that some have. See some some have cracked here. Uh, sometimes it's the corner. The corner, the the, uh, the the corner was just eaten clean through, and am I gonna do anything about that? I will say probably not. If this, if uh, if, if these guys broke, if they bent, it's because there was a lot of pressure. The 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 pants, the, the way that I that it falls on me, the the way that I wear it, the way that I sit on it, whatever the reason, the pants just wanted to bend that way very badly so if i fix them it'll just start bending again so i think that uh, the the uh, these were meant to bend and um, by adding some touch-ups of paint every now and then whenever you see uh, inside of the uh, 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 an edge something that uh, you don't want to see you just add a add a bit more paint uh, then I think that you'll be fine like that forever. So let the the uh, the little cracks come. I don't think that it'll uh, it'll really hamper the uh, the look or the functionality of uh, of the armor here. And uh, there you go. We have talked uh, probably about uh, the uh, the leg armor more than half the. Um, the duration of this video I kind of knew that this would happen but yeah like I said this was one of the two biggest uh, headaches of the entire costume and uh, all for what 
all for a detail that is completely absent and not seen on about 90% of my pictures. But there you go, if you're doing low-key, you gotta do it right. I'll uh, see you again to talk about uh, the rest of the uh, below the waist uh, part, um, uh, namely the uh, footwear. This is uh, JF Bibo Loki telling you goodbye and see you next time.